Tēnā koutou katoa, uh, ko Rachel Reese toko ingoa, ko Rauti Koromato Whakatū. Uh, no ma haere mai, uh, welcome to this Joint Shareholders Committee. Uh, we have a reasonably um, brief agenda and we'll start today with uh, karakia. Uh, kia tau mai te maramatanga, kia tau mai te rangi mai rie, kia tau mai te, te kaha, me te arawa mo tēnei kaupapa. Huie, taikie, kia ora, and let's be grounded in clarity, let's be peaceful, let's be strong and loving at the, this issue and bind together, so be it, some work to do today. So kia ora, good to see you all. I haven't yeah. received any apologies today, I don't believe, I'm just looking for around my little checkerboard to find Councillor McGurk, I haven't got an apology from Brian, has anyone received an apology from Brian? No, okay. Um, all right, well, uh, housekeeping's as per normal. Uh, using the usual Zoom protocols, we'll hand up function and we'll use the tick function just for voting today. We have, um, as I said, received no apologies at this stage, so um, I'll come back to that item in a few minutes. Here we go, here he goes. No apologies needed. Um, no public forum. Uh, any interests that we need to declare today in relation to the matters that we're discussing? Not aware of any interests. Uh, just in terms of late items, there is one item for discussion. There's no decision um, that we will, in relation just to the independent director appointment and process and so Tim and I had it we'll just come to that after we get to the um, item on the agenda we just wanted to update you on where we were getting to with that process so it's just an update and a bit of a question about an approach that we could take with uh, the appointment of the independent director so Tim are you happy that we do that sort of at the as either part of the meeting or would you rather, rather we close the meeting and then discuss it probably best discuss if you close the meeting and then just yeah. have a discussion that was, that was what I was thinking we'd do, yeah. I won't do it as an item, so just note, noting that there is something there. Um, okay, so items on today's agenda. We have um, the director report in relation to Nelson Airport Limited appointment of directors. So I'll just hand that over to the officers to introduce that report and then open for questions. Sorry, we need to go into confidential. Oh, we do. Oh, forget. I thought I'm on Zoom. I just forget we're, we're all, we'll do that. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. If I had the run sheet in front of me, I'd remember that. Um, who would like to move? No, and we don't have anyone staying, do we? No? Okay, move by Barry, seconded by Judane. Yeah. And nobody's staying? There's not, no, we don't have any externals. That's fabulous. I'll put the motion. No one can hear any of us. Oh, uh, you want to do all that? Okay. Are you in a place where nobody can hear what you're saying or see what you're doing? If you could just give me a physical thumbs up or something, that would be great. If you could now. Uh, yep. Yeah. I'm somewhere where no one else can hear me. Thanks, thanks Tim. Um, could you just now we'll just do the going into confidential, so just do a little voting. That is anyone against? That's carried. Thanks, thanks, Judy. It's a problem from with working at home. You feel like you're in confidential business all the time. Mm -hmm. um, righty ho. We have now got the item, which is the airport directors. And Nikki, is that your is that your paper or Mike's? Uh, through the Madam Mayor, it's my paper. Um, so I'll just do a brief introduction. Um, uh, as, as the paper outlines, there'll be two vacancies this year um, in relation to Paul Steer and Catherine Taylor um, stepping down in October. Um, and one of the um, things that we were keen to look at was, uh, was obviously transitioning a board chair, a potential board chair into that role. So the recommendations in front of you are to appoint an extra director now um, you know, sort of immediately after the constitutional changes, um, as well as another director in October. So we'll be running one extra director for a few months 
and that requires us to change the constitution. Um, and that within the constitution currently of the Nelson Airport, it specifically says, says that there are five directors and you know, best practice would be that you have a range. So um, in clause 16.1 of the constitution, it says a minimum of four and a maximum of six. So we have to make that change to the constitution to allow an additional director for a period of time. And that's a recommendation through to each council. So I'm happy to take any questions. Thanks, Nikki. Um, and look, I just, just for background in relation to this appointment process, the panel was um, Tim and myself and Matt Clark in this instance, because Paul Steer is um, really getting ready to stand down from, from the role as chair. Um, the uh, CAS term is concluding soon. Um, and just in terms of background, in terms of the chair's role, um, Matt Clark has recently been appointed to the as the chief executive of Wellington um, Airport, and um, in the in the thinking around the the board, we didn't think that was appropriate for Matt to be coming into the chair's role. Um, and Matt McDonald wasn't considered to be um, somebody that would be coming into the chair's role either. So that is the purpose of getting somebody up in now to see if they would be um, able to transition into the chair's role. Um, if not, then um, the board will obviously make that, they'll, they'll make that call, but I found that, I've always found the boards are pretty straight up about whether they, you know, how, how that's going. Um, then I guess we always have the option if we had to retain um, a director for longer to for another trend for a transition process and we could do that but the intention and on the basis of the interviews um the panel felt that um darren had the potential to move into that into that chair's role but definitely not immediately there would need to be a transition process so i think that was there any other background that you wanted to provide tim just as being from a panel perspective no no i think you've summarized it well okay cheers all right, going to questions. Um, Judine first up, and then Stuart, and then Rachel, and then Mel, and then Christine. Uh, cheers. Uh, yeah, so a couple of questions. Um, so just the whole transition process. So um, when I last spoke with Kath Taylor, um, she had anticipated staying on or extending her term, and I believe Paul Steer had asked her to. Um, for 12 to 18 months to actually provide that transition process, both of new members, but also um, the transition to the holding company. So I'm just wondering why that's not come through in this report for Kath to be able to do that. Uh, Judine, I haven't had that conversation with, with Paul at all. So if Paul's had that conversation with Kath, we're kind of, that wasn't the, the discussion. I have spoken with Kath in the last six months and Kath had indicated that if we were not, you know, if we felt we had a, an issue here in relation to cheering, she was willing to continue if that was required. But I, there hasn't been a, you know, that, that would be that would be an option for the shareholders to consider. But at this point, it's Paul who we, who, who is finishing and he has certainly stayed on on the board um, to allow this process to, to occur. And yes, in, the, in the report, it's got both Paul and Kath finishing October 2022. Um, and so, yes, Paul has already had his term extended. So um, I was certainly not suggesting extending his term any further. Um, but I was suggesting um, that, yeah, because Kath, um, has indicated her availability and and Paul's support that um, yeah I was wondering why her term wasn't proposed to extend for 12 to 18 months because that would you know I think you know we've got two transitions taking place and and the loss of Paul and Kath are the two most sort of senior governance members on that board and 
all due deference to the existing and people being recommended here today, they've got significantly less and the new ones quite significantly less experience. So I was just wondering why that wasn't um, a discussion that was had. Well, Judine, you're telling me things that I haven't got correspondence about. So I'll go across to Nikki to say, do we have do we have correspondence from Paul telling us that Kath's... No, no, um, I haven't no. been made aware of that. Um, and the discussions to date have been that Kath will be finishing in October. Anything at Tasman's end? Have you got anything from... No, and it didn't come through either in the initial discussions with Paul or in the around the interviews and the opportunity that the airport company had through Matt's involvement in the uh, interviews and subsequent decisions. So it wasn't brought up at all by the airport. No, I've got a Christine. She's just got her hand up. Any in? Um, <clears throat> two matters. Uh, just a point of clarification, actually, the interview panel um, um, through you, Madam Chair, was actually yourself uh, and myself. Um, Sorry, Christine. And uh, the other director. So um, that will just need to be corrected for the official record. Um, all I can offer is a very anecdotal comment and conversation uh, with Kath Taylor when I saw her in the Richmond Mall a couple of weeks ago. Um, obviously, I didn't say anything, but I kind of got the impression from what she said that she thought she was staying on. So um, I guess I'm just wondering whether we need to go back and have a conversation with the current chair. <laughs> well, Christine, there was nothing, nothing raised in that regard. The conversation I have spoken to Kath directly, which was to say, um, to you know, Tisa, she, she, her conversation was. If we needed her to stay on, she would. If the, if the shareholders needed her, came back and said that they would need her to stay on. At this point, we've got two candidates that we think yeah. would work. But what we've done is we've allowed us the flexibility with the membership of the board. So that's the yeah. that's been the discussion. I'm so happy we, with that. I would just hate there to be a, a miscommunication. Okay, I'll go on to my next question then. Um, just in relation to um, the selection of Darren Mark to be the person to go in early. Um, so out of the two candidates or whatever you want to call them in the paper, the two recommended um, people in the, in the papers, um, Emma has significantly more experience including experience at cheering um, and, and also experience in aviation um, especially around that critical pricing area so I'm just wondering why Darren is the recommended person to come in early also when it is the board's you know the board chooses the chair not not us Um, I'll go across to Christine to get your feedback on the interview process. <clears throat> okay, um, so um, certainly uh, I think both the candidates have got uh, a lot of uh, capabilities, but in different areas. Um, it was certainly um, evident to me in the interview process that um, Emma, um, A, I don't recall that she would be seeking the chair's role at all um, and that that's not her um, strength. Um, Darren, on the other hand, um, whilst he hasn't had a great deal of experience with a board of this size, um, certainly seemed to me that he had the capability to step into that role over time. Yeah, and I would agree with that. I didn't... Um... Emma's strength is around the pricing, absolutely. She was, um, and, and we discussed those attributes. I, um, all three panel members would be of the view that, that I wouldn't be recommending, you know, looking at Emma as um, stepping into that role at this point. But what I think it's fair to say is the board does appoint their own chair. 
but all of the companies that we've worked with come and they have that conversation around that with as to what their their thinking is and they usually reach out those decisions um, by consensus occasionally they'll have a vote um, about it but usually they've they've kind of worked their way through that and there's a very you know there's a good logical reason for how they work out their chairs roles but it is up to the it is up to the board um, who they put into that role Okay, um, and my last question uh, for now is just on diversity. We're continuing with just one woman on the board. Um, and so it just feels like this was maybe an opportunity to uh, redress that a bit. And just wondering, um, you know, especially when these are three year appointments, uh, why that didn't get a higher rate ranking, perhaps. Uh, Christine, I'll come across to you again, just in terms of the candidates we interviewed. And um, yeah, well, certainly of the candidates that were inter interviewed, um, there was no one that offered diversity that we interviewed uh, over and above the two people that we're recommending, in my opinion. Yeah, and I'd have to say they were stand out um, in terms of the, the interview process that they were... Um, quite clearly the, the, the candidates that had the capability. Emma, um, Emma, we felt we really wanted to get um, her up onto the board if we could, because we think she's got a lot of value to bring with her prior experience. And yeah, I think that, you know, um, you know, we do our best on the boards to get um, diversity. Um, uh, which we are making some progress on, on some of the boards and some just to, depending on who applies, we we don't. But there certainly wasn't a, a thinking that we needed to go out and re-advertise because we felt that the candidates that we had were bringing real capability to the board. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll pass to you, Stuart, and then on to Rachel. <laughs> Thank, thank you, Rachel, uh, Mayor Rachel. Um, just a couple of free questions from myself. Just in relation to the app, uh, the notice for applications, was there any particular strengths that were particularly asked for, particularly around aeronautical experience? Um, obviously, sometimes we have particular criteria we're looking for strengths. Was there anything like that? And was that given consideration? Uh, yes, it was, Nikki. Can you answer that so, one? Uh, through the chair, section 4.6 of the report um, was proven governance experience. Um, it, were, it was potentially advantages by having a background in finance, insurance, risk management, but that would consider different specialisms. Um, so an experience in a dynamic environment of change and disruption is also desirable, combined with a real passion for growth and prosperity of the region. Right, but nothing specifically from the airport company around aeronautical experience or, or knowledge. Um, they didn't specifically um, request that skill set. Thank you. And just so, in relation to uh, the chairing um, situation that Councillor Eagers talked about was that part of the app, um, the notice as well? Were they advised that they may be required to be the chair? Uh, we were looking for um, good governance experience, and uh, Christine, we were hopeful that we would find somebody in this round with um, chair's capability. But we, if we hadn't, well, then we had to come up with a yeah, yeah, plan B. Christine, do you just want to add in, to the attributes because the financial capability is quite critical this time too? Yeah. I think the panel was very clear that they were looking for um, an experienced and capable um, chartered accountant. And, um, and given that, um, yeah, you're losing two experienced um, people, um, that um, certainly one of them has those capabilities that that was deemed to be essential. So um, hence, um, I think why Darren's uh, appointment is really uh, uh, a great one to, um, to fill that role. 
So if, if I may, um, me and Rachel, just for you, um, why were we particularly seeking an accounting experience? Is there no one uh, able to advise the board? Or I wouldn't have thought that was a strength you'd particularly look forward to in a board member when there's uh, advisors that can do that for the airport company. Um, we felt this, that CAK, particularly with around audit risk, was particular was critical for us. So that that audit risk chair function that was going to be a key part of what we'd be looking for. Um, the the negotiation processes that the, the upside of this one is that we've got um, someone who's really skilled coming in in the um, um, financial negotiation with um, yeah. as so, well. Yeah. So that that was where we landed, Stuart. Right, and then I guess my next question, so obviously the, the selection panel thought there was no one once Matt Taylor um, went to the, to the Wellington Airport on the current board that could do the chair's role. Uh, we had sought um, feedback from the, um, the board, um, actually from the board chair, the board member who was on the panel and um, that feedback was that uh, we should probably look for a, somebody who could go into the chair's role. Right. Because I do have some reservations about someone coming on and then after a short time being uh, promoted to the chair, um, would have thought that people on the board would have had the capability to be the chair for the, even if it was only for a shorter term rather than someone that's recruited for each. But that's only my opinion. Um, thanks, Stuart. Thank you. Going on to uh, Councillor Rachel. Um, kia ora koutou. Thanks, Madam Mayor, through the chair. Um, so I guess I share quite a few of the questions that Judine and probably concerns or reservations that Stuart has raised, um, but I won't repeat um, questions. I was just curious as to, is there anybody on the board or of the candidates who have been proposed who whakapap is Māori? Uh, Emma, didn't, Emma didn't identify her whakapapa um, at the interview. I don't I believe she did. I just have to pull up her CV though, if I can find Unless you've got it there. Um, I'm just doing multi screens here. So maybe of the existing board members, as I've just checked on her on LinkedIn, and um, it looks like Ehaia might be a married name rather than a maiden name. Uh, I haven't actually checked with whether Quentin around whether Quentin's around Quentin. Whether, I actually don't know the answer to that question. It's a good question, though. Yeah. Okay. So I, I feel like it's pretty important to understand, um, you know, diversity matrix on a board. Um, I feel quite concerned. Well. Okay. Next thing is in the job in the um, the job description that went out for the role on the board, was there any reference to um, that person stepping up into the chair's role? I think Stuart might have asked something like that. Uh, Nikki, I think uh, read it before. So it's through strong. the chair, it was just recruiting for two directors. Right, okay. And so, I mean, I guess having... Yeah, I guess how, how often would you expect somebody in a job interview just straight off the bat to kind of say that they're expecting to step into a chair's role? Like I would think that's pretty plucky and unusual. So I don't think it's kind of feels a little unfair that we're making some assumption that Emma Ehaia isn't up for that just because she didn't say that in her job interview, in her interview. Role interview. I just wondered if there's any thoughts on that. Um, neither a candidate were asked about the chairs going into the chairs role at the interview process. I think what the board is looking at. So when Matt Clark's looking at, you know, coming to do to work through that process, what he's thinking about is what does that look like in the future? Because we know Paul's going to come off, but ultimately, the board will 
work that through themselves and come with a recommendation. So, um, you know, I think I think there isn't a it, at the moment. Um, I think that has to work its way through. Actually, I can't can't say Rachel. I really do. Um, but but okay. on the face of the on the face of the interview, what Christine and I are saying is we didn't see um, or hear the experience. It's kind of that experiential what would come through when we ask those questions about um, you know leading through a board. We we didn't we didn't hear that so much from from Emma, but she may develop very quickly in that role. It's a very comfortable space for her for um, avia in the yes. aviation sector. She, she seems to have considerably more kind of board governance experience than um, the other candidate. Um, so I guess I would be, um, I'm just wondering what the options are for bringing her on first rather than um, Darren Marks. Well, it's up to the Joint Chiolis Committee today. So you get some recommendations, but it's really up to the committee to decide what they want to do. Okay, so I'm probably just indicating that I would be quite keen to um, amend the recommendation if possible to change that around. Thanks, no more questions okay. at the moment. Okay, we'll move on to Mel and then we'll go to Mayor Tim. Thank you, Rachel. Um, I might dart all over the place. I'll try and keep some sort of semblance of order in what I'm asking here. But um, was in, and the number comes out of my head from a memory, was there no one else, was it no one amongst the 32 people, that um, applicants, that had some strong business experience? Christine or Rachel or Tim? Uh, there, were, there were candidates that had business experience, but Melissa, um, into people when they went through and through them did the rating. Um, these were in our top, you know, how you, you'll get on the sort of the tops, the ones to consider, then, a, you know, maybe another layer and then the unsuitable. So um, these are your candidates that were in the, the top rating, I think, Christine, but I'd have to pull those documents up. I wonder if we might have moved Emma up, actually. I think we did. Christine? Um, through you, Madam Mayor. Um, look, I can't comment. I filled in for Tim at the interview stage, not the shortlisting stage. Oh, okay, um, what I can say, of the people that we interviewed, um, I'm of the view that actually Darren will be an outstanding director and um, using the capabilities that he brings and that Emma has a completely different skill set and, um, and she will be great there as well. So um, as opposed to, uh, I think there were shortcomings um, with the other two people that we interviewed. Thank you, Christine, for that. Um, Do you want me just, yeah. just to add about the yeah. shortlist? Yeah, I mean, yes, there were quite a few people, but I wouldn't have characterized it as the strongest pool of applicants I've ever seen for a council um, entity director role. So mm. I, I don't think it was it didn't present a huge number of options uh, for the shortlisting and ultimately the interviews. And I guess coming back to the diversity question that's been asked a couple of times, that's also one of the, um, the challenges that you are very dependent on the, the range of applicants and they have to be able to tick the boxes around capability and experience, et cetera, as well as um, the diversity issues. I, I don't see it as an either or question. Um, and so I think it was one of the more challenging pools to identify four really good candidates from. And it's interesting to hear Christine's um, point about the fact that the two that have been proposed were probably um, stood out from the other two that ultimately were interviewed. Thank you, Tim. And that T helps Tim, me too. Christine's remarks help as well. Mel, can Sorry, I just okay. it just add to that because I have got the I have got the list here. So, um, uh, so yes, that that we we did move Emma. We moved up. Yeah, we liked it. We liked the look of Emma, so we gave her an interview, and she was she because she wasn't in that she wasn't in the sort of initial shortlist space. Um, she is she isn't she does bring she is an economist, so she brings that she, she brings that economic background. 
um, and strong in this commercial manager role from Network Tasman, but she wasn't a CA and we were particularly in that process looking for someone to come through with that um, really strong accounting background, which is what Darren brought through as well as um, his other governance roles. And that was clearly requested by the airport company. Yes, it was. So that was absolute, they were absolutely clear that they wanted someone with that level of financial expertise and experience. Yeah. yeah. We, we did, um, just in terms of diversity, we did, um, we did interview two men and two women. Um, and in this case, it was, as I said, there was a strong differentiation between the top two candidates and the other two candidates, I, I, you know, that there was a real gap between them. Thanks for all of those um, explanations. That's very helpful. You see, my point is when I ask about a business background is that whoever goes into the chair is placing, replacing Paul, who has an incredibly strong business background going over decades. And um, the board, I think, is the weaker for that. Therefore, just a signal, we're only giving, we're only talking over the kitchen table here, aren't we? We're not. Uh, I, I think uh, Kath Taylor should be retained if she's signaling to two, two of our people here today that she's, you know, expecting to be. Um, that's my thought on that. I do like the look of Emma. I really do. And uh, no worries, no, no worries about that. And Mark is an incredible guy, certainly, but I would like to see someone with business experience um, there and, uh, you know, we're not just into nice guys, we're into people with the a strong business background. It is a business and therefore it should, and there doesn't appear to be anyone that can uh, fill that role anywhere near the extent that Paul does. That's just some thoughts there. Um, Tell me about Matt Clark. When did he indicate, you know, you must must have been thought on the board that he would be a chair at some point. Is that correct? Um, Matt came from his uh, strong aviation background. And also, he lives in the region, so he's pretty passionate about this place. He flies across to Wellington for his work, but lives here. He... Um, I, my personal view, and I'm conscious that he's not the subject of today's discussion, so, but my personal view is a very capable, um, very capable director, and I think he would have a future as a, as a potential chair, but that would be quite difficult while well, he's the CEO of, he's just taken on the role of a very big role in aviation as the chief executive of um, Wellington Airport, and so I, I think he would be committing his time to that role rather than chairing Nelson Airport, and I'm not sure that would be a good mix either. So we missed a, lot, a great opportunity there, didn't we? Unfortunately. Well, no, he. I think I think he got a great opportunity to be appointed as the chair of the chief executive. And we, and we missed one. We missed one getting him as chair of the airport company, didn't we? So there's my thoughts. Cat Taylor should be retained. I, I think it, we. It, the board is going to be quite weak going into a very difficult transition period, and and I just think uh, um, you need experience there. So she should be retained. Emma, I just like so much about her, happy with that. And I'd just like us to drag our feet a little bit on Mark, but I know the guy and I, I, he's a great guy. And everything that Christine said is correct, but it's just strong business, you know, qualities that he, he um, that I would like to see the chair have. And I'm not just convinced that he has them. And I emphasize the strong and uh, acumen, I think was the word I was desperately trying to think of. So that's my thoughts on it, I think, at this stage, Rachel. Thank you. I'll come back to, thank you, Mel. I'll come back to you, Tim, and then Brian and Judane again. And then we'll see how we go from there. Yeah, I mean, I guess ultimately it's a decision of the, um, of the committee, but I'd just like to point out the people who've been through and interviewed and gone through the shortlist and interviewed the people and made the recommendation, um, working with the airport company on their um, required uh, skill set and mix, uh, including having um, you know, them involved in the interview and recommendation process. So, um, yeah, I, I guess it's 
the committee's decision, but um, whether we need to check out the Kath Taylor thing, I mean, again, that's not something that came up at any point. I mean, Paul Steer, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Rachel was involved in the shortlisting conversations, and it was only um, the second part that um, Matt stepped into. Or it might have been the long listing, the initial conversation about um, directors that provided this feedback came from Paul, and I, I don't remember that coming up at all um, in that conversation. So, but whether whether we like, if that's the committee's view, and we need to go back and revisit that, uh, I guess that's that's what we'll have to do. No, the process is that the board chairs let us know if a if a candidate would like to be reconsidered for an what would like to be considered for an extension because they know that we're. You know, we're looking at those terms because if we by now we'd have another recruitment process just about started. So I haven't. I'm just checking now to see. Right. I can't see anything at all from Paul Steer saying to me that that um, uh, Kath Taylor is seeking another term at all. Moving on to Brian. Yeah, some of the questions. I suppose some aspects have already been um, asked and answered. Just in terms of the, um, was it 30, 33 applicants? Was there a long listing and a short listing process carried out? Uh, no, this time there were, as Tim said, the calibre of candidates was, um, well, it, it, was, it was strong enough to be able to, to sort it out in one go. So we managed to go, go through and go, actually, we don't need to do a, uh, another round. Um, I'm just double, double check on that. Through uh, you, Madam Mayor. That, that's correct. Yes, it yep. was. Yep. Right. Yeah. So I'm looking at the two recommendations um, and the rest of the, uh, the board as a whole. And I'm just trying to think. I don't know much about. Was it Quinton? Is it Quinton Hall? Mm -hmm. Does he fire, Does he have a Naitahu Fucker Papa? Or correct. He's worked for Naitahu. So he came with a really strong, uh, so so setting aside his whakapapa, but one of his key strengths was obviously tourism related yeah. business and yeah. also a really strong connection uh, via both working for Naitahu in their tourism space, but also in that whole iwi engagement um, and experience place. So that was two of his key yeah, strengths okay. and hence the reason for his appointment in that round. Yeah, you know, just looking at the uh, you know at board as a whole, we know Matt with his infrastructure background at the port, Matt with his airport background, and I think um, we've got Mark with I suppose his business experience, and then Emma um, with her regulatory background. I think it's a reasonably uh, reasonably comfortable, well-rounded um, board with skills from you know, the appropriate areas. So. Um, Bit concerned about some of these conversations. Well, not concerned, but you know, these sort of ad hoc conversations we have with Kath Taylor. But I may I have to rely on what the the uh, Paul Steer has brought to us, which is that's where I am at the moment. So, thank you, Brian. Back to you, Judine, and then Kat and Christine. Uh, thank you. Um, so, when the advertising was done for these roles. Did the board know, did the airport board know, or did we know that we were looking for two candidates? Um, we were, yes, we knew we were going to have to come through to a term coming, you know, to a conclusion reasonably soon, that there was, a, that there was another term of a board member coming up. But we... If we can, and we've done that before, so we've done that for NRDA and we've done it for a few, oh, actually, for the, we, did we do that for the, um, not for the port, we did another one recently. If we get candidates that we think have got capability and we know something's coming up, we, we will go, well, it's, you go into the market, you know, if you're going a, month, a few months later and you've got two people that are good, then you you do try and try and get them if you can. But it's not I always possible. Did. I think we did yeah. do it to the port, didn't we? I think we did appoint two people to the port at one point mm. out of one out of one process. Oh, we did. Yeah, we did one recruitment and we've got yeah, we yeah, we did because we, that's that's gonna be a really nice um succession, you know, transition planning through, succession planning through. 
Yeah, so the, the reason I asked is just um, uh, Christine sort of highlighted the skills they were looking for, but I just wondered, um, following up on Mel's point, if some of the skills might have been different if they knew it was for two different positions, because you've got two people with financial background and not the commercial background, not the aviation background, et cetera. So whether the skill mix would have been different if they'd specifically known that this was two positions? Well, Julian, I just think that Emma comes with a fantastic commercial background. She comes with huge skill in that, cap in that space. So I, I think she is really commercial. Yeah. That was one of the things that we liked about her. So I think she's, and why we moved her up. So. I think Brian's comment before is you, you're sitting when you're sitting doing it, you're looking at the skills, mix of the skill sets you're going to need, thinking about what that looks like as a whole. And then you always have some restrictions in terms of, uh, you know, who can move into chairs role. At the moment, we don't have a, you know, you wouldn't look at this saying, um, you know, they've got to work that through. That's one of the reasons we're asking to get another director on there at the moment. And so uh, just following up, um Mel's point what would be the process um to discuss I assume with the board chair um a potential extension you know one year 18 months oh sorry to <coughs> Kath Taylor's um appointment to support the transition process was that a question for the officers yeah. Um, so through the chair, I suppose um, at this, I mean, you've got two choices. You could let, let the matter lie for the next joint shareholders committee meeting, which I think we're trying to get one in, on the 7th of June and actually deal with it all together. Or you could... Um, just pass the resolution in relation to Darren, but it's whether or not you want to separate those decisions or consider them as a package given it's, you know, board composition. Um, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm not quite sure uh, where, where that, that leaves us. So, okay, so for example, could we um, do the suite of recommendations that are here today and add a resolution to extend Kath's term for say 18 months subject to, you know, whether it's discussion with the board or, you know, what would be the, you know, um, you know, what, what would be that process of discussion or whatever. And yeah. Well, to be honest, Joan and I have been regularly starting to feel really uncomfortable about this because this is sort of like hearsay, hearsay, and I just don't really feel like that's a good process. I have talked directly with Kath Taylor in this process, and our conversation was if she was needed, she would be happy to extend. It wasn't, I haven't had any note from the chair to say, you know, you know, you know, if it if it was needed, because essentially we Paul does Paul does wish to step down. You know, so so we've got him, he stayed longer than he's been wanting to step down for for a while. He stayed because it's as, as Mel said before, he has a wealth of knowledge that we we were wanting to re retain through this transition process. But I mean, I, I must feel like I need to adjourn this meeting and give Paul a ring and see what's going on. But I, but I feel very awkward doing that off the back of of side conversations between, you know, you know I, I do feel awkward about that. So I'll probably just- yeah, Having a discussion with the chair. Well, I can, well, no, I've had it. Well, I, that, nothing's come to us through that process. So essentially what you're saying is you've had a conversation with Kath Taylor, who had a conversation with Paul Steer, and I'm, I'm yeah, I, these, look, these are, I'll get the rest of the questions and we'll have, maybe see what we want to do about this. So I, I can take a brief adjournment, see if I can call them, but see if we can get to the bottom of this. Um, Kat. Well, my view is that I'm happy with the recommendations. Um, if you look at the mix of the board, and I support what Brian said, and I remember when we appointed Quentin, because he was a Tasman District Council representative, and he came with a, a good tourism background, 
and a good connection with Iwi. I look at uh, Matt Clark, who's got uh, extensive background at the Wellington Airport, and then I look at the two new people. And I'm, to be honest, our airport is not that big or that complicated compared to some other businesses. And I think we need to take that on board. So look, if you wanted someone to remove the recommendation, I'd put the cat in the pool and I'd move it now because I'm happy with the recommendations and where we're going. And I don't think we need to extend Kath Taylor's um, appointment. Simple as that. So I'm happy to move if you want to accept it now before the questions are finished. Well, I think that's, I'm happy to accept that now. And I'll go to Christine and we'll see if we, we won't, it won't be the lapsing process. I'll just, if that's all right with everyone, but we'll just do it. Christine and David and hear from them. Thank you very much um, through the chair. I'm happy to second the resolution. I did just want to make a comment. Um, look, I feel that the, uh, you know, people have made comments about the various candidates based on um, they might know them or they've read their information. Um, I, found the, I found the selection process, recruitment process to be robust. Um, it was great having Matt there as part of the panel who was able to um, really think about the whole composition of the board and, and how uh, people bought skills that, um, that might be needed. Um, the interview process is made up of people's CVs. It's made up, uh, we had Zoom interviews and we also had referee checks. And, uh, and that's a lot of information considered by, um, by the interview panel. So um, I, I feel that um, the recommendation um, is supported by a robust process. And, and I agree with Kit. I think they'll be a great board. Thanks, Thanks Christine. Uh, let's come back to Judang. Uh, yeah, I'd like to move an amendment that uh, number two, resolution two says Emma a higher and number three says Darren Mark. I second that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Um, not any debate, or do you want to just move straight into voting? Did you bring up the um, just I'm working electronically. Getting up the resolution, okay. Uh, I have a question, just that we question. get clarity on what the actual, what we're voting on, please. Just yes, please. <laughs> and just just change well, it. I, I want to know what it is. I think that is, if we can put it up on the screen. I don't know, can you share screen, Robin? Um, an amendment there, or you, is that possible? J yes, just be yours. Thank you. Give Robin a couple of minutes. Should be able to see that now. We can. So that's what's the amendment. That's the amendment. It's been moved and seconded. So it shouldn't be any questions. That's three. Are there any questions? Well, I'll check. Are there any questions first? No. no questions. Anyone to speak to that, Christine? You've got your hand up. Is it a? Oh, you're on mute, Chris. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, I was on, on mute through you, Madam Chair. I, I did want to speak to it. Um, I, my recollection is that uh, if the interview panel had been put in a position where they were going to recommend one person to be appointed to the board, it would have been Darren and not Emma. 
And um, so um, I, you know, I won't be supporting the amendment to the resolution because I, I don't think that it was consistent with, with where we got to. Thanks, Christine. Um, Judine? Um, yeah, just uh, speaking in favour of the resolution. Um, Emma brings significant commercial experience. She brings aviation experience. She has uh, more governance experience. Um, this still doesn't guarantee um, that she will be chair uh, because that is a decision that the board themselves will make. This is a decision just on timing. Thank you. Anybody else should speak to it? Uh, look, I, I'm, not, I'm gonna speak to it and I can't support that um, on the basis of having um, gone through the process, the full process, having interviewed, uh, actually seen all of the, can the candidates that applied, um, gone through the um, interview process, um, having um, all of the reference checks and thinking about the composition of the board and having discussed that with the, um, with the board representatives. Um, I'm, there's nothing in here that gives me concern that the reference checks were extremely strong and they're in, in my view, the order that we're putting them up is in the right order. We've left provision on the board for an extra director and, um, and that process will move through over the next few months. And if they feel the board feel that they don't have sufficient um, chairs capability, then they will come back to us and seek to retain another director, uh, a director to continue. That would be my expectation. So I'm going to put it I'm just going to call a division. Robin, do you have any of those sheets? You don't use those at TDC, do you? I can do it electronically. So oh, can you? Yes. Funnily enough, we do have the odd division. Oh, do you? Oh, we have them in pretty much every meeting. Pat <laughs> has a stack of them some days. Don't you, Pat? All oh, right, where we go? I will call the division, but please, apologies. I'll just see, call you as I see you on the screen. Mayor Reese. Oh, no. Uh, Mayor, uh, sorry, Councillor Courtney. Aye. Council, sorry, Deputy Mayor Edgar. Aye. Sorry, Jardine. That's all right. Aye. Deputy Mayor Bryant. Four. Councillor Dowler. Four. Councillor Nonan. Aye. Councillor Sanson, I didn't forget you this time. Aye, thanks. Councillor McGurk. Uh, no. Councillor McKenzie. No. Councillor Ogilvie. No. Councillor Mailing. No. Mayor King. No. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. It's a tie. Just what we didn't need. What do your standing orders say? Ours don't have a casting vote. Oh, well, neither do ours. No, I asked don't either. So there you go. So, so does that revert to the, oh, I don't know, no. the status quo, which means the motion remains the same, does it? Yes. Well, I don't know that it does, actually. It means that um, it means that someone's going to have to flex or we're going to have to put this to a, um, we're going to have to put this adjourn for a minute while I can make some phone calls to see if I can get some clarity from the board chair. It seemed to me that, well, it depends whether you're being influenced by the fact that you think Kath Taylor has indicated that she wishes to, to stay on the board and she's told 
full steer that and that hasn't been communicated to us essentially and whether my conversation was prior to that conversation she's had a change of heart if that's what's is that, is that, re is that re relevant to this because i i, I oh, didn't think it, I out, ultimately we if we appoint these two people in whatever order and the board decides they don't have sufficient experience they, us know. they could make a choice to continue to run one director one mm. extra director um yes they can the around chair is theirs i would have thought so i would have thought that's what we've talked through before but i just get a strong feeling that there was um that was a range of questions in that regard councillor bryan and then councillor ogilvy Thank you, Mayor Rachel. So just a couple of things I do wonder, uh, it was talked about earlier on, should we let the matter lie on the table to the 7th of June and revisit it then when we would have further information? Or if I was assured that the board would be making the decision rather than us, um, I would possibly change my vote. Um, I don't think there'll be any further information, uh, Stuart, but the board does make the vote. Uh, there's no, they vote on it. Um, you remember yeah. the, the, the port, the port, the port did have a vote last time. I think for their for their appointment of their chair. So no, they let us know who it is. Usually, yeah, usually there's usually they they've, they've all sort of sorted out who it's going to be, and there's that conversation that goes on. But that's that's still they decide. Right, as it should be. Yeah. Yeah, as it should be. Yeah. Thank you. So if you're comfortable with that, I can redo the vote within a moment. With that reassurance. Anybody else wish to speak? All right, would someone care to move the recommendation in the report? Christine, you happy to move? Oh, you moved that. Oh, you've moved and seconded it, haven't you? So, so that was the amendment. So we're back. Actually, we are. We're back to the substantive. So the amendment was. I'm going to call oh, a no. division on the substantive. Thanks. Yep. Good. So, let Robin get organised. She'll be ready in a minute. Okay. So, just for clarity, Rachel, um, is that the uh, resolution that's now in the agenda? Is it? It's the one in the agenda, Stuart. Yes, it is. So it's just in the order that they would came out on the agenda. Deputy Mayor Bryant. Oh, I had to think about this for a minute. Councillor Courtney. No. Councillor Dowler. Four. Oh. Mayor. Council, uh, sorry, Deputy Mayor Edgar. I'll get it right one day, Judine. No. Mayor King. Four. Oh. Councillor McKenzie. Four. Oh. Councillor Mayling. Four. Councillor McGurk. Four. Councillor Noonan. No. Councillor Ogilvy. Four. Councillor Rees. Sorry, Mayor Rees. <laughs> Rachel will be fine, Robin. Yes. Four. <laughs> Councillor Sampson. No. The resolution is carried. Yeah, Mayor Tim's in that one. I'm just going to. Did you vote, Tim? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, I did. Oh, you did. Earlier, earlier oh, you're in. Okay. Time. Apologies, Robin. Okay, that is now carried. All right. So that is the um, confidential matters concluded, and we'll now move out of confidential business. So I will move us out. Seconded by Council Ogilvy. Thank you. I'll put the motion. All those in favour. Aye. Aye. Against carried. We're now back in session and we're ready to close the meeting. Tim, would you like to, to close? You're just on mute, Tim. I think, or oh, maybe not. Hang on. Yeah, would, no, you like to would you like to close with Karakia, Tim? You're on mute, Tim. I think he's on the Yeah, good as going. Yeah, yeah, I am. 
<laughs> I am. I wasn't anticipating being on here for an oh, hour and five minutes. You've got an office in the car. I'm already, I'm already late for the next thing. So <laughs> it's all good. I will close. Uh, kia makina kina kitu kauta. Kia matara tara kitai. Ehi aki an ate atakura. He hio, he huka, he hohu, tihe, mori ora. Mori ora. Thanks, Tom. All right, Nissa, just briefly, um, uh, we're in the process of just, just working through the um, independent, chair, independent chair. Yes, it is a chair. I'm thinking where I'm allowed to say that now at the moment. Independent chair of the um, hold infrastructure holding company process. And um, we need to be able to communicate with the um, as we go through the long list, short list process, a little bit more about how that's all going to come together. And so there's a bit of a chicken and egg issue that we just were talked through yesterday. Um, the chair of the chairs of both of the companies are sitting on that on that panel. Um, we, we thought that was an important all right. issue. Right. I'll just see if we can mute council. Right. You're looking for a JP, are you? <laughs> Robin, are you, have you got the mute function? Oh, thank you. Um, so we, we just talked through that yesterday. And so one of the things that we, we just, um, to, and Tim, look, you, you fleshed this out as well, if I miss things, just in terms of the process, what we're thinking could be quite useful is to appoint, um, essentially appoint, appoint somebody as the um, interim chair, chair elect, to so that that person can be, participating in the sort of the establishment discussions of the holding company because essentially um, we think there could be value in that person being able to work with us as councils around um, what we're you know bringing that whole transition process together building the strong relationship that we need is someone who's going to be the the chair of the company that we own um, so we thought we'd just just have that discussion today. Melissa's sort of waiting to um, work through that process to answer questions from the, the candidates that we're, we're shortlisting at the moment. So Tim, um, is that, that's sort of the gist of it really, wasn't it, to go through that? And what we're thinking is that, that, that essentially there'll be sort of an establishment phase where we've still got quite a lot to do in terms of putting together all the documentation, what the structure looks like, all of those pieces that we've, um, Nelson City Council have been talking about for the last period. And it would be helpful to have that independence, independent chair director actually participating in that process. Um, I have got um, a sense that you'd like a sort of bigger separation from perhaps the port and airport staff providing that input, and you'd actually like that, in, that independence as we go through to the person that the that the shareholders we're building the relationship with. So we just thought we'd sound you out about that today before those conversations commence. That would mean that that person would have a, a perhaps a bigger, um, more of a consultancy role to councils, a bigger role initially, and be more involved in the discussions with you as joint shareholders than had been anticipated and just someone being put into, established into the role and then doing the court sort of meeting process. Tim, is there anything you want to add? I think I've got the, that was the sort of the guts of what we talked about. Yeah, I mean, given this is largely driven by concerns from Nelson City councillors around um, the company, then that, that was the conversation that if it helped um, provide some confidence that we could appoint the person as a, as a, I guess, a chair elect, as opposed to make an appointment that would obviously only come into fruition at the point in time where councillors made a decision to form the company, um, if that was going to add value and provide a degree of comfort or an ability for people to um, get what might be seen as more independent advice, um, then it was just something we wanted to get people's feedback on, that's all. Um, Trudine. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, happy to um, start the ball rolling. Um, I do uh, like this approach. It is a more standard approach uh, to actually have the independent chair in early. Um, I think something that has been, um, for me, missing in the processes to date has been that governance level thinking. Uh, there has been, you know, lots of solid management level thinking, 
but um, there hasn't been that governance level. And to set up the holding company, there actually needs to be really good understanding of governance and to ensure that the holding company is successful, you actually need to set up that establishment and activation of that holding company board is actually one of the critical decisions. So I think uh, this is an important um, step to take. So I'm wholly supportive. Um, I just have some questions and uh, it may or may not be for today, but that's just on the I guess the efficacy of the recruitment process for the independent chairperson, um, the fact there was no job description up, there were sort of eight sentences on the IOD website, um, you know, so have we done a robust um, recruitment process? That may not be for today, that last question, but um, supportive of the approach that you've outlined. Um, Madam Mayor. Well, I, I think I think the answer to that is it has been challenging for Melissa because the shareholders are still in the actually that that is that sorting out the how it's all going to fit together and that's the chicken and egg part of it of going well which is which is kind of where we got to to go well actually having an independent chair elect would be quite useful because there's still all the you know, the constitution hasn't been, you know, we haven't rigid, you know, we haven't gone through all the pieces that we need to do as yet. So there is that process. But um, right. in terms of the caliber, in terms of the caliber yeah. of candidates that have come forward, they're pretty jolly strong. Um, yeah, I mean, I think one of the one of the great ironies is that actually the, the the standard of candidates for the holding company is dramatically better than the standard of the which it's just interesting observation. Um, I think Melissa's concern is that because of the brevity of the job description, that she needs to go back to those who we've long listed and basically give them a much clearer understanding of what the expectation is, because clearly if there is a role that we've just kind of discussed around that initial, almost a consultancy pre-taking up the role role, um, that may require a greater time commitment than given the num the most of these candidates are extremely busy um, with significant governance roles. So whether they are all keen to be involved in that kind of initial stage and the time that that may involve, Melissa just needs that information to be able to go back to work through. But certainly from what we've seen in the long listing process, um, I don't have any issue with the quality of candidates that have put their hand forward. In fact, I'd say it's probably better than any that we've seen for either the ports or airports um, for some time in terms of that calibre of candidates. Fantastic. Yep. I definitely agree with that. Very strong, very strong. So sometimes, sometimes brevity is actually quite useful for getting people to pick up, have the conversation. So this is a, there is some degree um, of opportunity here, but it will will depend. Some of those candidates, as Tim said, have got um, significant governance portfolios, and they may not be able to commit the time to doing a um, essentially a sort of consultancy role for us in that chair elect process. But um, we felt that actually there was that was a real value proposition. If we find none of them are interested in doing that, then we might have to come back to you with a, a different a different proposal. Any other questions or comments? No, all good. So you're happy if we proceed on that basis? If not, yep. What was that thumbs up on that? Anyone not? No, all good. Okay, excellent. Okay, well, that's us done for today. It's good. I've just been, was on an MFE call, letting them know I was coming to joint committees. I've just been discussing RM reform and um, how long we took to go through this meeting. It was going to be when I go back on, it's going to be a bit of a, a test of whether um, uh, the joint councils working jointly as a go or not. But I did explain to them it was an extremely long agenda, so I might not be back before they finish the meeting. Right, I'll see you later. Have a lovely rest of your day. Um, wherever you may be heading next. Thanks, Robin. Robin. Okay. Thank you, Rachel. Yeah. Bye.